I love Back to the Future. I love Wayne's World. I love Ghostbusters. Not that I really knew about the screen used Wayne's World car before we got the opportunity to own it, but now that we do own it and we are the ones who take care of it, it's the most important thing because I don't want to see it go away because it is, it's important to me as like somebody growing up and like loving comedy. Like that movie is very, very important to me. If they're not going to uh, preserve it, like, like then it's, it's up to us. We don't really like seek them out per se. Like it's not like I am finding a Ghostbusters car. Ghostbusters is iconic. We think it's important to have a Ghostbusters car in our collection. Let's see what happens when one comes up for sale. And it, and it did, and now it's here. So I think that's where it will go. It's kind of what comes across our, our plate. I personally love the John Carpenter movie, Christine, which is a 58 Plymouth Fury. You know, there's, there's, there is still iconic cars out there that aren't in this collection that if, if they come across our plate, uh, I, we'd love to add them to the collection. There is some movie cars that are in here. This is a 2010 Transformers Edition Camaro. Uh, we ha had to complete our um, Transformers Camaro collection with our 77, our VW Bug, and we needed the 2010. So it's a 12 year old car, but it still is basically a brand new car. It actually still smells like a new car because the previous owner only drove it in parades. So for a 12 year old car, it has I think under 1,400 miles on it. And next to its uh, friend, this, uh, this is a 1916 Ford Model T. It's, I think this is like a staple. Any of, any of this era of Ford vehicle is like, it's, it's a must for any sort of co car collection. That's the, the, that's, the best, that's the best part about these cars is those horns. And we got a 1961 uh, Morris Minor pickup truck. And we just got this one because we thought it was like super cute. The, tr the truth is we sort of started running out of space in our collection. So it, the joke kind of became like, okay, we can only collect small cars and bikes. But through this door right in front of us here is a Morris Minor car. So we, we found the truck and then sort of just fell in love with that look of car and then we found one of these too, the, the Miner 1000. You can see the turning signal. Ooh. That's the, the turning signal. Oh my God. This is a Cobra kit car. So it's got a big original um, Cobra 429 engine in it. And then they build these kit cars which are just fiberglass around, you know, an original engine. So this is a real Cobra 429 engine. This is a, a truck that we built in tribute to, for my grandpa. Before he passed away and before he got rid of his actual truck, he kept the chrome stereo faceplate and the knobs from his original truck and had them on his uh, workbench for years. And then after he passed away, they, they ended up at our house uh, at, on my dad's workbench and we wanted to build my grandpa's truck. And so we built this entire truck around the original uh, faceplate and stereo knobs of my grandpa's actual truck. So we put some modern stuff in it. There's a massive sound system in it. The, the, the truck is all on, uh, on air an air ride system, and then we sort of made it as a, a show driver. This one is designed to be a nice show truck, but we do drive it a lot. So it, uh, it, it gets out there and uh, we're, we're really proud of it. We call the truck just for you, dad, um, but behind the seat there is a dedicated plaque. So you pull the seat unveiling the massive sound system we put in it, and there's a sign that says, but the subs are for me. This is a uh, 57 Isetta 300. 
This is a, a fun little grocery getter. And this is the only BMW we have in our collection. This is our Beamer. Um, right now it's, it's, it's full of junk because we're moving a, a bunch of stuff around and then we just thought it was funny. It's like jam-packed full of toys. It's a 69 numbers matching Camaro. It's, we've added some of our own touches already. We custom built a center console because this car also has a stock factory eight track player in it. We put in a factory looking knob that switches between the Bluetooth and the eight track player. So you can still play eight tracks in this car. Uh, this is uh, another, this is a movie car. Uh, this is a 32 uh, Deuce Coupe. This is from the film American Graffiti. It's a replica of the, uh, the car from American Graffiti that uh, John Milner drives. We've amassed a, quite an extensive collection of American Graffiti cars. This is a, this is a classic one for American Graffiti. It's a, um, a T-Bird, the one that Suzanne Summers characters drive. And this also came from Graffiti John's collection, as well as this car right here. This is a uh, uh, 58 Impala. It's the character, Ron Howard's character actually owns this car, but he lets his friend Toad drive the car. So we're, we're, we have quite a big American Graffiti collection. We do also have the 58 Edsel. Um, which Ron Howard's girlfriend drives, but that's not here. It's waiting for a back window seal. And then we're just missing the, there's a Citroen that uh, Richard Dreyfuss's character drives. And Graffiti John is actually building one. So when, when he's finished with that, we're, we're gonna buy that car off of him as well. So we'll have a huge American Graffiti collection. Uh, we should probably look at it, but we do have the scooter as well from the opening of American Graffiti when, when Toad crashes into the garbage can, so opening shot of the movie is Toad driving in on the scooter. He tries to get off the scooter, it stays in gear, takes off from him, and he crashes into a garbage can that looks very similar to this garbage can, and then kind of steps off the scooter, leaves it. Ron Howard is leaning on his Impala, and they both just sort of stayed in character and just went on with it. it it's just a great moment in film history of an, an example of like, unless the director says cut, like you, you stay in character, you keep going. Yeah, Starsky and Hutch here, we can't, we can't miss Starsky and Hutch. This is a special car as well. This is a 1976 uh, Ford factory Starsky and Hutch car. So based on the popularity of the TV show, Ford decided to make red, white striped Grand Torinos um, for one year. They made just over a thousand of them. A hundred of them went to Canada. This is one of the 100 Canadian factory Starsky and Hutch cars. The factory cars were red with a white stripe. In the, in the TV show, they are red, white stripe with a black trim. So we added the black trim. But the other thing we did is Ford, the back corner of it, the stripe kind of makes like a, like a right angle, like a hockey stick almost. Well, in the TV show, the angle is like really round, but the factory for some reason made it like a sharper angle. So we thought, you know, because it's a factory Starsky and Hutch car, it's a Canadian one, what we should do is we'll, do the, we'll add the black stripe to make it a little bit more accurate for the TV show, but we will honor the factory Ford shape just so that if there is somebody out there that, that knows the, the factory Ford info, they can go, hey, that's the factory Ford shape, and we can sort of honor both, right? We got some older ones down here too. The blue one on the bottom is a, a 1929 Pontiac. Above it is a, a 1923 Nash, and we found that um, on Facebook Marketplace. Like, it's, it's incredible what some people I want to get rid of, but we got it because we just could not believe how big the car was. It's a seven seater. We sort of just jump on things when they come up and, and grab them and then we put them into storage. And it's like, okay, when we have time, um, we'll, we'll, that one will come down and that will be the project. There's just a lot of other projects that uh, come up. 
Yeah, so this is the movie car garage. Uh, we'll do a, a brief walk around and just show you everything that's in here and then we're gonna dive deeper into uh, some of the, the special ones in here. We'll just start here. We've got a uh, British Leyland Mr. Bean uh, replica. We actually built it out of a 85 Austin Mini, turned it into a 77 British Leyland. Got door, same door latch and everything. This is a special one. We're probably gonna talk about this one here. This is the actual screen used Mirthmobile from the first Wayne's World. <laughs> this is my best friend, Garth Elgar. Hi. We actually spent like a year building a replica of the Mirthmobile. That replica is now parked in my garage and I sort of drive that around on nice days. Um, and that's only because this one came up for sale. And after spending a year being obsessed with all the little details of a movie car, and a, a movie that I like love dearly, Wayne's World, um, it just was like, well, like, when are we gonna get the chance to buy the screen used one? And what's the big deal with owning two Pacers that are Mirthmobiles, right? So I'm very, I'm very happy with how our, our replica turned out, but nothing beats the real one, right? And this one is, is special because not only is was it on like um or in in wayne's world but it was on episodes of pawn stars as well because it was actually the pawn stars guys that found this car and did the initial red uh restoration if the car was maintained from when it was used in a film even a even a film prop the same thing if it was maintained and sort of does resemble the same way it was in the movie, you'd want to leave it and preserve it as is. But this particular vehicle was in such disarray that it needed to be restored. And then that's where you do the things where you're like, well, this the mirror, the side view mirror is not broken. Don't replace it because that's the real mirror. That's the screen used mirror. So you, you leave that on. And even if it has a little bit of imperfections in it, that's the real mirror. You leave that. The licorice dispenser, you leave that. The car has the original licorice dispenser in it. And I can tell because there is a close-up when Wayne and Garth are on their way to see Alice Cooper. There's a close-up of Garth grabbing licorice from the licorice dispenser. And in that close-up, you can see a glue streak that runs from the top ring down behind the licorice cutter piece. Well, that's on that licorice dispenser. And this is the one that started it all. Really, this is a DeLorean time machine. Everybody knows the, the time machine, even people like Dustin who have never seen Back to the Future. And people in the comments are gonna be like, how have you never seen Back to the Future? But he's gonna watch it tonight. He said he's gonna watch it tonight, so. But he knows of the car. That's how, that's how iconic this car is. I've been obsessed with this movie since I was probably around like 10 years old. And that was like the crazy thing, the crazy sort of like elaborate thing that, that I dreamed uh, for my wedding was to have wedding photos with a time machine. Not a DeLorean, but a time machine. My dad was getting into building cars and, and, and growing his car collection. And unbeknownst to me, he just went, he found a DeLorean in Atlanta, found a guy in Florida who turns DeLoreans into time machines, and then came one day and said like, hey, I'm adding a DeLorean time machine to the car collection, and it'll be here in time for the wedding. And it was like, holy smokes. Well, at that point it was like, well, we could have our DeLorean at events and we could do things because it's fun to show this car. Like the, the reaction that people have to this vehicle just in terms of it being a DeLorean is special but the fact that it's a time machine from back to the future is just uh it's just so exciting the DeLorean Motor Company was created um in the late 70s by a uh, a car engineer a car maker named John DeLorean who used to uh, work at General Motors. He decided that he could make a car himself. 
This is that car, this stainless steel sports car. There is an extensive history. Basically, the FBI gets involved. There's some uh, drug trafficking. There's some embezzlement all in there, um, all to make this competing motor vehicle for the, the big corporations. When I sit in these cars, I get the feeling of like what it was like to either drive it while they were making the movie, or I sort of kind of feel like the, the character, right? Just, you know, limited visibility in this car. You got all the lights and sounds flashing at you. Like it's, it's, it's a special feeling to, to get to, to drive these cars. So I love this replica, um, but the only thing that would beat it would be something from the movie. And then uh, this black, this is a 46 Ford. This is also from Back to the Future. This is Biff's car. This is the, the, the car that in the film gets covered in manure. Up here with our last Back to the Future that we have currently, this is Marty's dream truck, an 85 Toyota extended cab. Um, this is the famous line, check out that 4x4, four four. that is hot. Check out that 4x4, four four. that is hot. Someday, Jennifer. And then down below here, we have a special car. This is Johnny Carson's DeLorean, the talk show host, The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. There is an extensive story here. Um, if you're interested in the history of, of car manufacturing, look up the John DeLorean story. But this is Johnny Carson's company car. In 1977, he invested $500,000, and out of that, he got a company car. Um, got a couple other ones here. This is a special one. This is a duck vehicle. This is a screen used duck vehicle from Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That's the fourth Indiana Jones movie. This Harrison Ford drove this vehicle in the movie. This is the, the famous jungle chase sequence. This one is from the Amazon show, The Man in the High Castle, which was filmed locally here in the Vancouver area, all four seasons. Um, and then beside that, we have a Volkswagen Beetle. That's the original Bumblebee, modeled after like the animated series, as well as the 2018 Bumblebee movie. And then below it is a 77 Camaro Bumblebee, which is again, the 2018 Bumblebee, because he's clean and nice. And then in the 2007 Michael Bay Transformers movie, he's all rusted because the Bumblebee movie in 2018 is a prequel. So we have it clean and nice. Uh, we'll continue over here real quick. This is Herbie the Love Bug. It's a classic, number 53. We've got Ghostbusters, Ecto-1. Everybody loves Ghostbusters. This is a real 1959 Cadillac. Uh, ours is built out of a 1959 Cadillac Superior. Superior is the name of the coach building company. They're the company that built the ambulances and hearses of the time. In the original Ghostbusters film, it's made out of a 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor. The biggest difference is the back end. Our back end has a um, a sloped chrome piece, whereas the Miller Meteor, which was used in the film, has like uh, straight windows that kind of wrap all the way straight around the back. But those 59 Cadillac Miller Meteors are extremely rare. Like, uh, they estimate that maybe there's like 50 that exist in the world. And I'll bet you like 30 of them are Ghostbusters cars. <laughs> this car is like so special to, to own. And we, the, the new Ghostbusters was shot completely in Southern Alberta. Um, we've been fortunate enough to be able to take our car to some of those filming locations. It's just been like really exciting some of the opportunities that have come from owning this car and some of the amazing people that I've met through having this car. Similarly to the DeLorean, it's arguably more iconic 
Um, I think that that just comes from the fact that it's larger, it's white, and it has the film's logo on the side, right? Like that is the Ghostbusters logo. So it, it, it's incredible uh, branding on, on their part. Just like the time machine, when this shows up and people get to see it, just the, the look on their, their faces, like it, it, it never gets old. It never gets old. Um, Jurassic Park over here. We've got the, the Jeep from Jurassic Park. We've got our, our lovely T-Rex here. She's very well trained, don't worry. And then hidden in the back here is our Jurassic Park Explorer tour car. Now we actually have a second one that's crushed. So in the film, there's two of them. There's a 04 and a 05. And this is Ellie, our Velociraptor. She's also very nice. Um, got Pizza Planet here from Toy Story. This is, this is the one I, I think I'm most proud of. We did a lot of the work on this one. I personally needed the roof rocket to be vacuum formed. That's, that's in my head, that's what it needed to be. Very similar to the Domino's pizza lights that go on top of cars. It needed to have that like warm, um, like translucent glow to it. So we ended up finding a guy who also had built a Pizza Planet truck and he had the rocket that I was like, I need that rocket. So I was like, somebody has the, the designs. Did a little sleuthing, ended up finding a guy in Atlanta who is a props maker and vacuum formed Pizza Planet rockets. Like what, are the, like what an insane world we live in. The other thing is this super specific canopy. We saw a canopy sitting in the back of someone's truck, not on their truck, but like thrown in the back of their truck like they were taking it to the dump. So we stopped. Uh, went in and talked to the guy and yeah, it turns out he was taking it to the dump and it had the top window. It had um, an additional hump on it. But again, we were like, we can cut that off, fill it with fiberglass. It had, it didn't have um, extra side windows. It didn't have these smaller side windows, but what it had is on that additional hump, it had windows horizontal. So what we did is we cut new holes and used those horizontal windows, shortened them down, and made them the side windows. All the black dirt that you see on this truck is actually soot from an acetylene torch. Painted uh, all the, the rust, the only rust that is really on the truck is the rust on the bumper. And then we matte clear coated the whole truck so it always kind of looks a little dusty, looks a little dirty. Then we've got 18, the 18 van. It's a, a staple of, uh, of 80s television. A-Team, Knight Rider on the far end over there, Dukes of Hazard, General Lee up above. And then this special one, this is Burt Reynolds, Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am. This was one of the cars that he owned himself. This is a 1977 Pontiac Firebird. This is the last one that he had restored for himself before he passed away. This car is still in his name. We'll never take this car out of his name. That means we can't get uh, ICBC road insurance, but that's okay. Like what makes this car special and what makes it different than a regular stock 77 black and gold Firebird is that we, we have the title with Burt Reynolds' um, name on it. And, and for fans of Smoking the Bandit, for fans of Burt Reynolds in general, that's a pretty cool thing. When I walk into this garage and I see all these movie cars, like I, I'm so happy, like I, I, I'm so excited like every time I come in here, it, it, it doesn't, it's not old for me. I walk in and I go, that's the Mirthmobile. Like that's the Wayne's World, the real Wayne's World Mirthmobile. That's a DeLorean, that's a Ghostbusters car. And then I sit and I do my work, but then I get to look up and go like, there's the Ghostbusters car. Like, like <laughs> how special is that?
One of the coolest parts about having this YouTube channel as a business is that it gets me access to a lot of really interesting personal stories in private collections, like the 153 Mall store and this car collection. So I wanna give a great big thank you to Brandon and Kevin for inviting me out to produce this story. And a great big thank you to Kevin for his support on the Patreon page. So I'm gonna save a half dozen more vehicles from that collection just to share on the Patreon page. So if anyone is interested in checking that out, there'll be a link in the description below. I'm also really excited to say I have all kinds of new merchandise over on the merch line. This one's, I get such a kick out of this. This is from the Mexico collection. <laughs> so if anyone's interested in helping support the channel, there's a couple different ways to do that and it is always hugely appreciated. But most of all, thanks for watching everybody. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. I'll catch you on the next one. When the lights go down and the crowds have all gone home and I lay my head in a bed that's not my own I say a little prayer that the good Lord keeps you safe As I count the days till I'm there to keep you warm I'll be thinking about you I'll be thinking about you I'll be thinking about you oh, oh. I'll be thinking about you